police have put out an arrest warrant for a 34-year-old man suspected of that quadruple homicide in our nation's capital. The timeline in this murder mystery is continuing to evolve tonight as law enforcement officials now believe $40,000 in cash was delivered to the mansion where the couple, their son, and their housekeeper were being held hostage. Here's ABC's Ryan Smith. Tonight, startling new details in the murder mystery gripping the nation's capital in what could shed light on what was happening inside this multi-million dollar mansion when it was set ablaze in a chilling quadruple homicide. And now, police have a suspect, 34-year-old Darren Dylan Wint, and they're offering a $25,000 reward. The four dead, Sava Savopoulos, the CEO of American Iron Works, his wife Amy, a stay-at-home mom, their 10-year-old son, Philip, and their housekeeper, Vera Figuera. According to the Washington Post, police reports they've obtained reveal Savopoulos made a flurry of calls the day of the fire, calling his bank, an accountant, his assistant, his company, and a construction executive, starting at 7 a.m. and ending just over an hour before the blaze erupted. Bernardo Alfaro, husband of Figuera, exclusively telling ABC News he became concerned when his wife didn't come home the night before the fire. I didn't hear from her, so I called her. And every time I called the phone, it was just going straight to the voicemail. And this bombshell. In the last hours, we have learned that $40,000 cash was delivered to the Zavopoulos home that day. While the intruders were inside, even as these new details emerge, so much still shrouded in mystery. Here's what we do know. 32, uh, one, Woodland Drive. Our three stories had the outfire in the second third fourth. Uh, we removed four victims. It's gonna be a prolonged secondary search. But this wasn't just any fire. We do know at this point um, that the fire uh, appears to be intentionally set. Police confirming there is more to this story. There were injuries discovered, appear to be blunt force or sharp object injuries. Tonight, the grisly details on the Savopoulos' last moments. Information suggesting Sava, Amy and Vera were all doused in gasoline and stabbed to death, while 10-year-old Philip was burned in his bedroom beyond recognition. A family car was found on fire in this church parking lot 15 miles away from the house and close to Wint's family home. And police releasing this surveillance video of a person of interest running not far from the scene of that burning car. I've been here for 25 years and nothing like this ever happens. Right now everyone in the neighborhood is just a little shaken up. They're not sure really what to think. One of the first pieces of evidence that authorities are examining, this voicemail. It's Sava. I hope you get this message. That's Sava calling another housekeeper the night before the blaze, telling her not to come to the house. Amy is in bed sick tonight, and she was sick this afternoon, and Vera offered to stay and help her out. So she's going to stay the night here. But Vera's phone died, and she doesn't have a charger, and I don't have a charger that fits her phone. So I don't know if you can tell anybody that would be worried about her. That same night, sometime after 9 p.m., a Domino's pizza was ordered to the house. We know that the perpetrators in the home, they order Domino's pizza. There are documented cases where DNA has been taken off pizza crust and matched up to a perpetrator. According to the Washington Post, that's exactly how investigators made the link. Bernardo Alfaro, the housekeeper's husband, waited in vain for his wife to return his call. Then Thursday, the morning of the fire, family employee Nalitza Gutierrez receives a text message from Amy Savopoulos telling her not to come to the house. And they say, I want to make sure you do not come today. I don't understand why. God saved my life. That morning, Alfaro, housekeeper Vera Figuera's husband, shows up at the Savopoulos' home hoping to find his wife. I'm knocking and knocking and ringing the bell and that of my feeling it was that somebody was inside. Before he could get close enough to see, he says Savopoulos calls, telling him that his wife took Amy to the hospital. Hours later, the mansion goes up in flames. And at 5 p.m., the tragic confirmation, four dead, three of the bodies showing signs of violent injury. Further adding to the mystery, the family's Porsche, once parked outside of their home, now found smoldering here, in this church parking lot several miles away. 
The police chief has said that this quadruple homicide in this quiet, affluent neighborhood has left neighbors really on edge. You know, I certainly understand how tense and, and uh, un, you know, uh, nerve-wracking this is for the community. We try and keep our foot patrol and bike patrol officers out there so they see the police presence. There's a number of ways you look at these cases. First, you go to informants, people who have dealt with robbers. There are actually groups of people that do home invasions. They will look at the phones, both of the husband, the wife, the home line, both housekeepers. They'll look at their computers, obviously, to see if they've had any traffic that would suggest or lead them to somebody else. As you pull all of that information, there'll be little streams of information that come out. Police were carrying items out of the house, but they're keeping a tight lip on what was in those evidence bags. The Savopolis' surviving teen daughters were reportedly away at boarding school at the time. I'd like to be able to tell you that I think we'll have an arrest tomorrow. I just think it's premature for me to comment on the status of the case right now because there's still some more evidence gathering to do. Now investigators say the hunt is on for Wint and any possible accomplices. For many in this upscale neighborhood, answers can't come soon enough. Savopoulos was the CEO of American Iron Works, a steel and iron manufacturer. He and his wife Amy were well known in their community, reportedly active donors to several social and political causes, touching the lives of many, friends say. I saw Amy give of herself, her time, her energy, and her love. The world is not as good of a place without her in it. For Nightline, I'm Ryan Smith in Washington, D.C.